Hey YouTube, here's this 2012 Chevy Malibu with 13,000 miles. Take a look in the back. I assume this is the LS trim. It looks like a plain Jane model. Those are not alloy wheels. Those are actually wheel covers, but the steel wheels are in spoke form. So it doesn't look too bad that way. It's a bit teasing. So let me do a tour of this one. There will be some minor differences to an 08 or 09 that I may have once done. The four cylinder model. So again, 2012 Chevy Malibu. 13,000 miles. Ugh, this AC's nice. And this car is just dry. So let's see how long this thing will run. Well, I've once done a Malibu quite long ago, but uh, I want to redo the video because I'm quite sure I was using my Nano, iPod Nano that is, <laughs> which the video quality wasn't that great, so I'd like to redo this. So let's get right down to comfort immediately. The Malibus are comfortable. These seats are very cushiony, very supportive. Your back also hugged into the seat. You cannot complain at all in terms of comfort. And the driver's seat actually does have this button over here, which actually raises it a little bit. Yeah, the seat does raise up electrically, despite being manual adjustments. Um, yeah, thigh support is not that great, but it's not too bad either. It's tolerable in the fixed position that it's in. Shoulder room is quite good too. I have rather wide shoulders, and you can see I'm not cramming onto the pillar. Leg room, this center stack is a bit on the fat side, but it's not too bad. So your feet are quite good. I do have to have the seat far back actually, but comfort is very tolerable in this car, at least in the front it is. So let's go over to interior quality. Dashboard is nicely padded on top, even over the instrument cluster. It's not plastic or anything. I think in the older one, the 08, I think it was plastic. I may be mistaking, but at least in here it's nicely padded. Hardens right back down to the traditional grainy GM plastics here. You can hear it. Very grainy. Glove box is damped. Uh, it's actually a bit on the teeny side. Shuts evenly though. You can see all the gaps are quite even. Very hollow. You can see this little compartment up here. Also, all the lines are quite even, surprisingly radio and dash CD, the aux right there. Climate control, those three dials, hazards, Wee. sounds old school. Vehicle stability control, passenger side airbag on off indicator so you know the drill when that seat senses someone's glutus maximus in there. Little pocket in there for power outlet. Oh, this is all plastic. It feels rather cheap. Thankfully, this car comes paired with a six-speed auto. Drag it down to M for manual mode, and you can manually shift here with this little toggle switch. I do like this little touch here, the exposed stitching. Okay, why was this a pain in the ass to... You have dual cup holders in there. I think this tray is removable, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it is. I think it does come out. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a cup holder. I love how the sun is right behind me and there's no glare issues. And since this car is not tinted with a bright interior, the quality, picture quality is going to be nice today. Yeah, the rest of the center console slides open and it's a bit sure-footed. Just the back end feels a little jiggly. The armrest is jiggly, no doubt. Here's the upper level. You can see there's dual latches. You can see what I mean. Very creaky there too. But the armrest is nicely padded and you can see the exposed stitching 
And the steering wheel, nicely thick, but it's bare. It doesn't get any more bare than this. Cruise control, and that's about it. Vehicle info, trip computer, average MPGs, those little things. Tire pressure, hmm, that's nice. Turn signal lever, headlamps, wipers, intermittent speed, and this steering wheel has to tilt and telescope because it's actually it was actually rather far. Yeah, the steering wheel is damped, and I'm glad that it telescopes because it was positioned rather far for me. Panel dim, this little lonely button feels rather flimsy here. You can see how it just shakes all around. Little pocket. But surprisingly, all the lines and gaps in there are quite even throughout this interior. Door panel looks quite bland. It is soft atop. It is soft on top slightly. This piece here, all plastic, but it feels kind of rubbery. Yeah, it is a rubbery finish. Padded over here, armrest, slightly padded, but it's not a big deal. So if you were to rest your arm on there, you really would not be able to tell the difference whether it was hard or soft because it's really a very hard padding. Uh, moving over, window lock, driver window, auto down, does not go back up automatically. Power mirrors, door locks, trunk to slatch. The lower section of the door panel is cheap, grainy looking plastic, but it's not flimsy. They made it quite hard. But this is rather sloppy. You can see this shaving here. That's just disgusting. Um, yeah, again, seating adjustments. This is the backrest. Raise and lower the seat position and lumbar support. So it's actually not too bad. It's not that basic. This is, a, this is kind of ugly. This reminds me of what automakers used to do in the 80s to put for the e-brake. The e-brake used to come with those little wires, those little, that little hairy, I forgot what the hell you call it. But yeah, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. So let's take, open the hood. Oh, forgot, fit and finish on the pillars. It's quite good actually, no gaps. Passenger side, quite good. Now it's quite ugly over here once it gets to the weather strip. Um, yeah, it doesn't mold nicely with the weather strip and you can see the other side. Not very nice, kind of pokey. And back there, I don't know if you can make out. Yeah, the plastic shaving up there, sloppily made. Not so much to finish, like I said, it was badly made. Ha, huh, no oh shit handles either. That's quite odd. Bastards, they don't offer that in here. Well, there's the interior lighting fixture. And the headliner is padded. Only a mirror, no vanity lights. Sun visor feels very sturdy. Doesn't feel that flimsy at all. It slides out too. Block out the sun if you wish. Oops. <laughs> okay, so there's the mirror with OnStar. Push on, push off for this interior lighting. And only a mirror. No vanity light. There's the mic in there for the OnStar, so... Yeah, I have the seat adjusted roughly to where I would drive this car. So, let's take a look in the back seat. Trunk is already dislatched. And legroom isn't too bad, actually. The seat is very cushiony. But I think thigh support is going to be awful. Yeah. My legs are up in the air here. And you can see how they had to make this insert here because they knew the legroom would have been awful here if they didn't do this to the seat. So yeah, my leg is just cramming into the seat, so you'll be quite snug if the driver is over six feet tall and the rear passenger is six feet tall. But if you're under that, it won't be much of a problem if you're sitting in back. Um, yeah, you have a power outlet and cup holders. I think if you were to hit a pothole or something, this thing could actually jump open. And you can see seat pockets back there. No armrest or anything. So it's just sit here with your arms hanging down. And door panel. Materials do carry over into the back seat. 
somewhat padded up here. This, oh, this section actually doesn't carry over. This is just plastic, unlike the front, which is actually padded. Armrest, somewhat padded. Again, a very hard padding. And again, that cheap plastic down there, you can see how it's scratched. And I just hate how GM just makes these plastics so sloppily. You can see there, you can see right there, let me focus, shavings all over the place. So yeah, it's quite ugly, even when you go up here, shavings, yeah. It's like they cut it off with a steak knife or something. <sighs> Let me take uh, another look at that back seat and from another angle. Focus, there we go. You have your headrests. And I think these seats do fold down, yes. Pull on this little strap. Oh, stupid seat belt. Yeah, these seats do fold down, 60-40 split seating. Ew! Look at that little bug. I'm a beetle! I'm a beetle, I'm a beetle, I'm a beetle. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm a beetle. The trunk is very shallow. It is very wide and deep, but you really cannot fit tall objects in here. Because again, it's very shallow. Spares in there to donuts. So yeah, you can see the trunk light. Like I said, it's a very wide trunk, but very shallow. Focus. There we go. And this car does ride on 17s. You can see the size. And these are steel wheels, but this is just a wheel cover. But I like how GM actually made the design of these steel wheels. At least from here, it doesn't even look like a. It doesn't even look like it's a hubcap. I think automakers should do that if they want to use steel wheels. You can see the front end. This should be GM's 2.4 liter EcoTech. It's a four-cylinder, dual overhead cam, obviously. You see up there what it says. Focus. Yeah, we can get to revving this one. Let me set my Nano. <laughs> Low fuel. Yeah, it's so empty. Yeah, the engine doesn't sound bad. It just sounds a little bit on the buzzy side on the high end. And there's this ringing noise, too, that I hear. I don't know what that could be. Maybe something exhaust manifold cover or something on the cats. I don't know. I forgot to mention this does use an electric steering here. It's not power steering. That's enough of this boo. Bong, 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 bong.